Okay, so in this video we will add ESXi servers to vCenter. In previous video we installed vCenter for Windows and now it's time to access it through web browser which is the vSphere web client and then we will create a data center and add ESXi servers. So let me just switch to vCenter. This is my vCenter server. You can perform this step from any computer from your management station. For the lab's sake I'm using vCenter server itself. And that's why I installed Google Chrome on that on this computer. So what I'll do I will connect to vCenter which is vCenter.itsense.com and I'll end up with this login page. Login to vSphere web client. And here it goes. Now, if you remember, for a single sign on, we specify an account for administrator at vSphere.local. That's that was the name of our uh, single sign-on domain, and I'll specify that password. I will install client integration integration plugin as well, and let me just initiate this process. Now it's installing, uh, it's downloading from internet. It, just try to log in with this. It's the first time, so it just takes a while. Once again, you can use any supported web browser. You can use Mozilla Firefox. You can use Internet Explorer if you like. I'm using Google Chrome and it's totally up to you. So here we are, vSphere web client, finally. And yes, the license warning, because yes, right now currently there's no license assigned to it. It's running an evaluation mode, uh, which is all good. We have no problem at all. So I'll go to host and clusters. Okay. And the first step, as it says, that what you need to do is to create data center. So let's create a data center. And I would like to give this data center a name, let's say Burke. Okay. All right. And the second step is adding a host. I can add a host. Right click is fully supported here. So add host. IP address or host name. As I have already added host records for my ESXi servers, so I can use names. Should be okay, I think. Right? So esxi1.itsense.com. Yes. Root account. Let's see. Yep. Certificate warning. Oops. Okay, sorry. Let me write the password again. Yep. 
<laughs> okay. About license assignment, I will leave it to evaluation at the moment. Lockdown mode, I will keep it disabled. Here you have the strict lockdown mode as well. It means it's only accessible to vCenter and even uh, it won't allow you to access, you know, DCUI, which is you have to be very careful, you know, if you select that. Usually in the previous version, it was only two choices, disable and normal, where, you know, if there is something wrong with vCenter, you can always go to local console and do stuff. But the strict is pretty dangerous. I'll keep it disabled. Okay, and yep, that's the VM location. Eval license, build number, network is VM network by default, data store one, locked on all, you can finish. And now it's adding this standalone stand host. Host. Let's do again. Let's do this time for ESXi2. Dot, sorry, itsense.com. Next. Hopefully, I will write this time password correct. One go. Next, da, 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 da. disable, finish. Let's do it for third one, which is esxi com and Sorry. Yeah. Okay. As you can see. It's all good, and we have all three hosts, ESXi1, ESXi2, ESXi3, right? Nothing under this. If I go to ESXi1, summary, here it is, eight logical processor, four NICs, no VM. And this is total CPU capacity, memory, which is 12 gigs. Out of that, 1.4 is used by ESXi itself. That's the local storage. Still, I did not connect storage, uh, sand storage to my ESXi servers. So all they have at the moment is local storage. Same thing goes for ESXi2, same hardware specs, specification, and same for ESXi3. Each one 12 gigs of RAM, 8 cores, and a local storage. One thing I would like to do, which people usually do, or depends, on the, it's all totally depends on what you want to do exactly. If I go to store managed storage and storage devices, you can see here we have a CD ROM attached to it and a disk. Correct, which is fine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And here we have a different option, which is refreshing the storage and other stuff. Uh, for sure, we would like to do that uh, later uh, 
and we will refresh the storage of course after adding SAM. First I will, we will add the storage and then the rest of them will refresh it. But in a related objects, VM, as I say right now, there is no VM network. We have just VM network, right? And data stores. This is data store one, right? If I go to ESXi2, it's not data store one and bracket one. Uh, don't like this. Usually people like to rename it, right? So we can make maybe a store two or any name that you like. I can keep it in a store two. And here, okay. To data store three. Oh God. Good. So local data stores, no distributed switch, of course. VM network is there, right? For each one of them. So that's what we did at the moment. Uh, what exactly? Is a situation at the moment that we have a data center called BERT, and inside that data center we have three ESX silos working standalone. They are not part of cluster. At this moment, we did not create a cluster. And before cluster, for sure, we would like to create or oh, sorry, add a shared storage. Because how good is a cluster if there is no shared storage. There has to be some sort of shared storage. Fiber channel, iSCSI, or maybe hyperconverged storage like vSAN. And in one of the video, uh, I will configure vSAN. I will add SSD drives to these ESXi hosts, and I will show you how to create uh, virtual SAN using local storage. But most of the labs, we will use iSCSI storage. And we will provision, I will provision some LUNs and we'll take it from there. So, this is it for this video. It, that was, um, that's how you add your ESXi servers to vCenter. Thank you.